everybody, it's Tyler here at the Texas Cup, checking out team number 148, the Robo Wranglers. And to help me out do this, I have Giovanni, Isaiah, and Millie. And we're going to be talking about, uh, of course, this awesome robot uh, that we got to see a little bit of last year uh, and seen a bit more here at the Texas Cup. Talking about, of course, their entire power cell journey, going in through their shooter, climber, and sword drive. All this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Giovanni, start us out with the uh, intake on this robot here. You know, 148, all black, everything, right? Well, a little bit of red. But yeah. <laughs> other than that, uh, tell us about the design and then uh, any modifications might have been made uh, either from 2020 or throughout this year as well. Okay, so in the 2020 season, we started out with a three-roller design, but it was a or an, actually a four-roller design. Sure. So we had the three rollers that you see right here, and then we had, a, we had another roller inside that helped give the balls a little extra kick into our hopper system. And so we've made a little bit of a modification this year. So we went with a three roller design and then we have mechanism wheels on the ends of it, each of this uh, roller right here, which allows the balls to, if they get jammed here in the corner, it'll pick them up, it'll track them and put them in the right path yeah. into the middle. And then they're all powered by one Falcon. And then there's a really cool feature about our robot, our intake here in the top. So what this does right here is we can line up perfectly onto the human loader zone and then the balls just roll right into our hopper area, which allows for um, really fast cycles when we're trying to go through the matches. I, I do like too how you guys saw this system, and I know we'll talk about the climber later, but there's really not a point for a power cell to pop out at all, right? No. As it goes through, so you have this yeah. here, this kind of blocks here, that sort of thing. Uh, and can you and talk us a little bit more about the material that's being used on, on here as well? Yeah, so the majority of the intake is made out of just straight polycarb, and we used uh, we we have we machined all of this in house on our on our mach uh, machine shop. And then uh, one key feature that I did miss out though is so whenever our intake releases, if you were looking here, there's a flap that'll actually it'll kick out oh, with sure. the intake, and then it'll just it'll relieve any death zones that could build up potentially build up here above the bumpers. Makes sense. Well, let's keep moving on and going over to Isaiah. He's gonna be talking uh, about your. Uh, uh, your intake here, Spindexer, our, our hopper area, uh, and into the kicker as well too. So tell us more about uh, the concept and any changes might have been made on this too. Okay, so yeah, um, the hopper and feeder, um, not much really changes. It was a pretty uh, solid um, make whenever like we created this in the first off. It, um, we went through a lot of iterations, but once we got it, it was pretty solid. and It ha doesn't have many jams. Um, as you can see, after it comes up through the feeder right here, it comes and it goes to, into this hopper which holds all five balls and it rotates this way into the into this feeder right here. And this is what um, creates the push, which uh, moves it right here up into the feeder, which comes up into the shooter right here. Um, this is all made out of uh, Lexan and Polycarb. And right here, this is our cone, which is 3D printed, and it keeps the balls in a straight, like in an orientation to keep it uh, without jamming. So a, a lot of teams, by the way, we saw that had like the dividers in there originally. Did you go that route originally, or was it always kind of this open concept? Uh, so first off, we started off with like big sections, I guess. Yeah. And um, we were kind of having like a lot of jam jamming, and um, material was sticking together, and it just wasn't working very well. And we just decided just to um, just to put it all together. We call it a, a washing machine. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. So. Uh, and then this feeder here on here, what, what motor are you actually using to run uh, this? Uh, we're using a Falcon, actually. Um, it is powered right over here. It, there's a gearbox right over here in the, in the back end, that, which is powered down by a pulley, which comes across. And there's its gears, and it's powered right here, as you can see. Very cool. So uh, let's keep moving on. Millie's going to be coming in and talk about the uh, shooter and the control panel uh, manipulator as well, too. Uh, but yeah, shooter-wise, love to hear, uh, of course, uh, with the, uh, the hood. Uh, looks like some Fairline wheels on your uh, robot as well. But talk to us about some of the iterations and process that went into it. Yeah, so when we first started, we had like two big 
red like fair line wheels and we changed it to where it's smaller wheels so that it doesn't expand as much and then we have the three rollers at the top like made out of smaller fair lane wheels and four of them each in like the three sections and the shooter's powered by a bag motor here at the bottom or the turret i'm sorry the turret is sure. powered by the bag motor i was going to be like so, wow all right so. <laughs> so we're able to turn like 180 and then some this way too and then the shooter hood is powered by servo and it's able to shoot all the way back from the control panel and then when it goes all the way down it can shoot right like up against the high goal and low goal. So uh, on this here, uh, you know, we, we have the power, powered wheels here and here. Do you know of like how much compression you're getting on the power cells or anything like that? I don't know for sure. Yeah. Um, and then uh, on this itself, uh, what have you found from like tuning like the larger wheels versus these on here? Because we found a lot of teams, this, this helps tremendously, obviously, and we've been seeing more and more teams do that. It helps it go more in a straight line and like just power through and like straight go up to it, like to the high goal. Sure. Uh, next up, a control panel uh, manipulator. Where's that at? It is right here behind oh, wow. okay. the climber. And we just put our climber up and then we spin it and it's the same motor that powers the shooter. Fair enough for that. I think that's a good segue to talk about the climber. So, Giovanni, you're going to be uh, covering that. So, let's talk more about the climber. Uh, and if we can actually see it uh, deploy as well, too, that'd yeah, be awesome. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, so our climber is powered by one Falcon motor and then. Yes, and then so the way it works is this is its starting position, and this is actually this actually also holds our intake up when we uh, when we first start in a match, and then it, it allows it to deploy. And so the way this works is there's a um, there's a shaft running across the bottom of the robot that connects both gearboxes on either side, and that allows it. And then there's a string that runs through the entire system, and it basically just allows it to winch up whenever it it gets uh, to the hanging part of the match. And then so this system right here, so it's um. It's in three sections, uh, telescoping tubes. So basically what it does is once it gets to one section, it stops there and then the other one continues to expand after that. And then our hooks right here. So we have multiple hook designs depending on what angle we're trying to go for sure. when we're hanging or depending on where we're hanging on the bar. And so these are built uh, modular so we can re easily replace them. And to say we're going for a backwards hang, we uh, face it backwards or have a different type of hook design on that. Is that something you like when you're looking into a match, like how far ahead of time do you need to determine that? Or I guess the better question is how quickly can you swap those out? Yeah, um, so it's, it's just one screw sure. that you pull out, swap it in, and then just push it back in. And so typically we go over that with our teams um, before each match and just ask them uh, whenever we're coming up with a game plan on who's going to hang where and at what time we want to go hang. and then. We just we add a hook depending on like what better suits our situation. Well, let's wrap up uh, with your drive. You guys are using Square Drive uh, this year on your robot. So tell me a little bit more about that. I know you're just going to chime in uh, with your kind of input for that. But let's talk more about it. I think we're going to tip the robot up too, right? Yeah. Um, so this is the same drive um, that we had for the 2020 season. So this is a, a West Coast Products uh, Swerve drive sure. that we modified to fit um, to fit uh, our needs and for this year's game. And so the, most of the modules basically the same. We've just done a couple different changes with our encoder. Um, we you know we 3D printed different parts for it and just made it suit our drive. And then uh, a cool unique feature that we have are these Swerve skids right here. So these are made out of polyethylene plates and that we routed out. And, and so what those allow us to do is, uh, as you can tell, they get pretty beat up by the burns, but it keeps our wheel hubs, our aluminum wheel hubs from getting any type of damage. So we go full speed into the berms and then it makes first contact with the skids and they just allow us to glide right over the skids without making contact with the hub. One of the last things I want to wrap up actually is talking about your electronics that you have here. Um, we are starting to see more and more teams mounting their electronics upside down uh, for things. Can you tell us a little bit more, uh, like, is this the first year you've done that, or what have you seen from results of doing this? Um, so for this specific robot, we mounted, we inverted our electronics panel because we have a big spinning disc at the top, and it's really dangerous to have a lot of electronics yeah. near that. And so, you know, when during one of our meetings, we were just like, what if we just mount all the electronics at the bottom of the robot? And we just went from there.
and being ready to all the time. Fair enough on that. Well, yeah. 148, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us about this uh, incredible machine. Always look forward to see what robots you come out with each year, and can't wait to see how this does, of course, here at the Texas Cup. But, you know, future seasons, future competitions, always can't wait to see what you come up with. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.